welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Ada. I am so grateful for everyone who has been able to tune in. It's actually been four weeks since I had my daughter and I'll introduce you to her soon, but not in this episode. Um, thank you so much for everyone who's liked, shared, subscribed to the channel. It's been really, really amazing, the outpouring of love and you know like how everyone just kind of really likes the whole concept so let's keep going and seeing how it goes so in today's episode i'm going to give you a tour of my nursery because that's kind of been the number one question everyone's been asking and then i'm also going to talk about a few things that people have asked me so far if you have any more questions please don't forget to like subscribe and then also ask me all the questions you can either here on my youtube channel or on my instagram page which is ask underscore doctor dr underscore ada and i'll be more than happy to answer all the questions you have so let's see how it goes today on the tour this is my nursery i'm going to give you a little nursery tour um and show you some of the things that have come in handy like you guys know i had my baby a few weeks ago and so building a nursery is something that every mom gets very excited about it took us quite a while to finish ours and we tried to put in a lot of things that were sentimental to us including actually creating things ourselves so sometimes that's like we all know that's sometimes part of the, the nesting nesting process for moms so i'm just going to show you my nursery and then i'm also going to show you some things that have helped us since the baby has been here things that we didn't even really think about when putting together the nursery but have been helpful and so those may also be helpful for you when you start putting together your nursery so this is our display wall i guess wall of pictures a lot of these things are actually got in the same store it's a store that just does creative work um some of these things are very easy to put together yourself you can always go online print out a picture and put it in a frame so that's all we did here um it's not particularly for anything it doesn't have a particular theme but like i always i have said um we liked elephants so we kind of tried to put some elephants and some animal um, inspirations in there and then something a little quote and then you know just some more animal type things okay so let's talk about this this is her dresser and her changing pad and changing area we got this from Amazon and it arrived in the house and we had to put it all together it's kind of like a fun depending on what kind of couple you are or you know what kind of family setting you have it can be a fun bonding thing to kind of put together the dresser but for us for me it was a lot of fun because i didn't do a lot of heavy lifting but for my husband it was very tedious so just figure out what you like to do but it was fun to put together so this is her changing um pad area and then we got this you know fluffy or i guess soft changing area that one of my friends recommended we get and i think it's been a very good idea because if if we're changing her on a hard surface, she doesn't like it as much. But changing her here, she's very, very comfortable. And it's just a localized place and everybody gets to know where you change her. Like anyone who's changing her in the home kind of just knows to bring her here. And she really, really likes looking up at all the pictures. So I think it's a good area for her so far. Full sets over here where we have all the things we need to change her. Um, this is a warmer for the wipes. Some people love warmer, some people have, you know, think they're a waste of time. I actually have come to like them myself a lot because when you're changing her and it's cold, like if, you're, if we're changing her, we're not in the house and we're using, you know, wipe out of her diaper bag, she gets so stressed out. But if you're using, if you use this warm one, she needs to be more comfortable. So then, you know, you want to have the wipes obviously very close to you and close to your changing area so you can quickly get what you need and just keep going. And then we have her diapers here. And then in here we have a little caddy that has all the things that we need to change her or all the things that we need to um, have her get ready when she's being changed. So like her creams and her lotions and things of that sort. I got this little like changing station from Target and it wasn't expensive at all but you do have to put it together yourself and then in it i just tried to organize like her her towels and her um washcloths and then here is her, here is her blankets and then her diapers and things of that sort are down there so then moving to this area then we have um her bookshelves i actually got these little um shelves 
from ikea initially when i got them they were like you know that honey brown color of wood regular wood but then i saw on youtube some people who had gotten them and painted them white and used them as bookshelves and i thought that was a really cool idea so i got them i painted them and then i put them up on the wall if you in a few weeks we'll start reading to her when she kind of focusing a little bit more on us so that's what we have in this area and then we have two little um baskets that we use for her dirty clothes and her blankets side of the room we have um a little shelf again that stores different things some of her medications um and some of the things like her tylenol in case she needs it and then these other um, little baskets just have blankets swaddles and toys that some family and friends have given her this is a picture of her one of her aunties gave her this box and things in it and this as well and then over here obviously we have her crib so she hasn't slept in her crib yet because she sleeps either with us or with grandma in her bassinet at night um, but it's very important that when you do get a crib that you don't get the crib bumpers <laughs> so if you don't know what a crib bumper is I'm gonna put a picture here so you can see but those are the things that line the crib and a lot of places still have them when they're you know either when they're in the store when you go in and you want to buy a crib or if you check online you see them they're actually quite dangerous for children there have been lots of incidents of sudden infant death syndrome SIDS from children who sleep in cribs that have crib bumpers so be very careful when she is going to come into the um, this room to sleep at night or for longer we won't have anything in there so obviously this is my feeding pillow but when she's sleeping she's just going it's just going to be her in the crib without any pillows toys nothing in there so this is the way your crib should be this is a little mobile she likes it to kind of like look at it go around and it has this hot air balloon theme including the hot air balloon theme that's over here um, the other thing about this crib it actually gets um as she gets older you can make it into a bigger crib so okay this is our feeding area lots of times i come over here to breastfeed her hang out with her my mommy also feeds her here um this is a swivel chair we also got this from off amazon it came already put together which was really good so you didn't have to set anything up um you have a little light here so that you're feeding at night you can just turn just the lights on and you don't have to put the overhead light on okay that is the tour of my nursery um just the things that we have for her so far she really likes it my mom really likes it too so i'm glad we kind of put together something to um that she would like and she'll get to grow in if anyone wants anything that they see in this video just send me a message about what you're interested in and i can try and um send you a message about where i got it from okay guys so i'm going to answer two questions that i got actually both off instagram so the first question is a really good one in my first episode we talked about some vaccines that babies get in the hospital while they're still there so one of them was the hepatitis b vaccine and the question i got happened to ask you know do we have to get it at that time can you get it later and that it's very important that especially in america you get the first hepatitis b vaccine in the hospital um because it's important to protect the child even before they go into the outside world where they can be exposed to other people who may or may not know that they have hepatitis b in their blood um, and then the other thing about hepatitis B vaccine is to let you know that it's a series. It's just the first one the baby gets. When the baby is two, about two months old and about four months old, they get the second and the final dose. And then the other thing too, I, had, I have had some parents who don't want to get in the hospital for whatever reason. And they would tell the doctors in the hospital that we'll get it when we go to the pediatrician's office. Now remember the first visit to the pediatrician is within the first week. So if the baby ends up getting that first hepatitis B vaccine, at that first pediatrician um, visit that's fine it's not too late but it's always easier to get the shot as early as possible before the child is exposed to anyone at all then the second question I got um, asked a very good question as well and it was about um, birthing classes so the person asked you know you have these birthing classes that are available what do you think about them do you think they are necessary do you think 
I should go for them. So depending on where you live, there may be birthing classes by nurses, in a hospital, in a center, in a community. There are some birthing classes that you can get from like the yoga studio, the prenatal yoga studio down my street. So it's up to you, but I think they're very important if you get them from places like in a hospital or from like a midwife group or in a center that does actual birthing um, because they have a lot more information that you think you know from just talking to your doctor or googling or things like that that are not always very resourceful or very helpful. I actually took a birthing class with my husband and we took it, it was once a week for four weeks and it was very very eye-opening because even though I'm a pediatrician there's so many very tiny nuances that you don't think about that important like I mean something as basic as what do you wear you know what do you put what what are the different clothes that a newborn needs you know to go out the door the first day when they come home you know a lot of people obviously don't take the newborns out often but if you have to go to the doctor's office you have to put them dress them like what are the different things you need to make sure that they're going out you know fully ready to meet whatever temperature it's out there and then the other thing you have to think about if you go to a birthing class that's very good you end up learning a lot of things about what the process is going to be like when you're in the hospital the different medications what are your options things like that some people work with having birthing plans um but you come to you soon come to realize that when it comes to birthing a child lots of times things don't go as planned and we'll definitely talk about that in my very next episode where i talk a little, a little bit more about my birthing story and hopefully introduce you to my daughter so thanks guys for watching today um i hope you continue to um share this channel and subscribe and like um and then we'll see you on the next episode thank you bye